Good morning. There's a bunch of you. There's a bunch of you there. I won't tell you what I've been doing, okay? Just let you know. I've been writing a song, you know? You know, for most of y'all, y'all don't know this. I write all these songs, you know, and stuff. And so um, I spent a little time. I spent, I spent a whole, I spent three minutes on this song that I want you to sing. And so uh, here are the words. You have, you have, tell me you're going to sing with me, though. I'm going to give you words, and you're going to help me. Is everybody with me? Somebody like, I don't know about that. I know you don't, but you're going to love this song, okay? All right, now, see this right here? Now, I was at the schools. Leave that up there now. I was at the schools, okay? I, look, I was in the hallways with the parents. I saw the joy. I saw their eyes light up. And listen, and they even had to pay like whatever, dues, you know, and stuff. They were, could not wait. Where do I give my money, please? Take my child now, you know. So I thought it would be a good thing to do is sing a little song about this today. All right? Y'all ready? It's the most wonderful time of the year. With school's jingle belling and mom and dad yelling, thank God it's here. What? We go. It's so weak. I do the thank God it's here. Thank God it's here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And football too. Okay. All right, that was my little song, you know. Worked a lot. I worked really hard on that. And you get copies of that on the way out. We got a CD, got a bus tour going, and uh, t shirt. Okay, just letting you know. Y'all happy to be here? All right. Last week was pretty good, wasn't it? Last week was good. Y'all remember the shark in the water? Yeah. Chomp, 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 chomping on you? Well, we're gonna, we've been stopping that, okay? We've been stopping, stopping the shark from chomping. We've been talking about that. And what we were talking about is how Satan likes to mess with, with Christians. He likes to try to take you out. That was the whole idea. That's why he's in the water. He's always trying to take you out. He's always trying to devour you, the Bible says, and destroy your life. He just doesn't want to hurt you. He wants to take you out. Okay, do you understand that? If you're going to move the kingdom of God and become a disciple of Jesus Christ, he wants you out. Everybody got that? So that's what we're going to be talking about. How do we, you know, when it comes to this thing, when God speaks to us, and God is going to speak, by the way. When he speaks to us, do we do what he says? Are we willing to hear what he says for us today? Are we actually going to do it? Or are we going to be afraid? Now let me tell you about your shark real quick. God's going to tell you something, and you're going to have fear. Fear is not of God, okay? And then you're going to worry. Worry is not of God. You're going to have voices in your head when you lay down at night, and it's going to tell you you can't do it. That's not from God. So just recognize your shark, okay? We have some things that we can do to take this out. And one of the things that we do is the Word of God. We're going to talk about that today as we walk through this. Because God's going to speak to us. He's got, he, you know, he's got things for us to do. And most of the time when he speaks, the reason why you're willing to listen is something happens, something changes. And next week I'm going to tell you exactly how to hear from God and what we need to do and how that gets set up. But every time God spoke in the Bible, every time something happened, there was a change. A circumstance changed, a happenstance changed, something changes in order for us to listen. You know, something happens, whether it be a conflict, something comes along, but somehow some, God gets our attention. Most people only come to church when something goes wrong. Most people only pray when something goes wrong. Then we find scripture, try to help me through this situation. That's called Christianity. That's what we call it. I call it going to church, but I don't call it discipleship. There's a difference between following Jesus Christ and becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. There is a difference. And you have to choose it. Okay? It's not something that you just feel your way into or pray your way into or read your way into. You have to be made, is what the Bible says. So we're talking about making disciples, and we're talking about a vision that God has given me for the next five years. And I call it, Can You See? And so I've got, when I wrote it all out, it's been coming for a long time, been working on it, and uh, there's more than I can say today, so we'll divide it up in two weekends, because I want you to be able to hear from God but you need to know where we're going, and then you need to figure out how you're going to fit into this thing. That's where we are with this and this whole deal. I want you to go to Joshua chapter 1. 
if you would, just go there, because I want you to make sure you get this. God's going to get our attention, and usually it comes because of a change or something happens, of course. And so most of us, let me tell you this real quick before I tell you where we're going. Most of us are looking for comfortable Christianity. What I mean by that is, I want to come to God. I want to know God. I just want my life to be okay. I want everything to go all right. That's kind of how we want it. So we pray these prayers that God just make my life go all right, make my week okay, don't, you know, all that. That's not how God's thinking because you don't know Him. Because things don't, you know, people don't change unless there's conflict. You don't change unless there is pain. You'll stay the way you are. You'll continue the way you are. And unless there is pain, you're never going to change. And so God works through conflict. God works through bad circumstances, happenstance. So for you to say, God, I just want my life to go okay, and I want my life to be smooth as silk, then you're not thinking like him. And when you, ha when you have a prayer and you pray a prayer, you say, God, would you please do this or will you do that? Most of you are thinking that God's going to answer your prayer based upon on you only, how it's going to affect you. That's not the way he thinks. God does different stuff with different people. And one thing he has in mind is how is he going to move the kingdom with you? He's not worried about if it's going to be comfortable for you or if it's going to be painful for you. If you're asking him to use you, now here's the problem for most people. This is why most people will not go to the discipleship level and move to where God wants them to move and follow God. Because it is painful. If I'm going to move the kingdom of God and I'm going to do something in my life, it's going to be painful and I'm going to bleed. That's just what it is. The Bible's full of blood. And part of that Bible is Jesus Christ, His blood for your sin. Nobody, listen, you can't be a disciple of Jesus Christ and have a convenient life. It's just not, it isn't going to work, okay? It isn't going to work. This is why most people will just come to church. Most of you want your Christianity to be based upon what you get on Sunday morning like, as if this will sustain you and you will get there and you will make it and you'll feel good. That's not going to work if you want to become like Jesus Christ, if you really want to move the kingdom. When God talks to you, when God speaks to you, he's going to have people and kingdom in mind because we're it. So you need to remember this as we walk into this. We're it. The way things happen on earth, that he, God's will on earth be done, it is going to be done through us and God's people. If we're not paying attention, if we're not paying attention, nothing will happen. Nothing will happen with you and nothing, nothing will happen with the kingdom. This is what you have to remember. We are the carrier, we are the distributor of God's will on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we do. And sometimes we don't even pay attention to that. We're just trying to figure out a way to get through. God, don't let tomorrow, tomorrow be tough. Is that what God's thinking? What if God wants it to be tough? You're thinking the wrong thoughts. We're the carrier of God's Word. We distribute God's Word through His power, through the speaking of it, through the living out of it. We distribute God's Word wherever we go. It's not a track or just handing out a Bible. It's who we are. That's what happens to us. We're the carrier of God's Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, which is empowering us to do the things that we need to do. This is what happened with the disciples. If God waits on you to feel good, we will never move the kingdom. Okay? Just like an exercise program. That went out the window, didn't it? We'll just wait till January. Let's start over then. Forget about it. Holidays are coming. Eat what you want. Okay? That's kind of what you want to do. The Holy Spirit's there to empower us to move the kingdom, to get us out of bed, to do things that we cannot do on our own. To speak things we cannot speak on our own. That's what the Holy Spirit does. We're the carrier of God's resources. This is why the shark's in the water. If you get this, you're going to change the world. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want it. So the shark's going to always be in the water. We're the carrier of God's resources. Why do you think you have money and cars and land and houses and all that stuff? Do you think God just loves you and wants to give you a house? Of course he does. Is that all he's thinking? See, sometimes we pray and we think, well, God gives me this or God gives me that, that it's just for your benefit. He's thinking about the kingdom. You're praying, God, what color car do I need to get? Is that really what, is that really what you want to ask him? <laughs> what kind of what color? I mean, is that really what he's into? You see, he's thinking about kingdom. The other thought would be, 
if you get the car, you, you're, you may be barking up the wrong tree when you pray for something. Because we're distributors of God's kingdom and moving God's kingdom, and we use money and tithe and offering to move the kingdom. And if you go get a car and you can't give God his money, you may not, you're barking up the wrong tree. Don't even ask. You see, it's a, it's a different thought process when we become what Jesus wants us to become. The hardest thing you'll ever do, and I'll show you how to make this work later on, is get over yourself. That this worship service is for you. That this church is just for you. And I got it. We hurt. We all need each other. That's why God said to get together. You are spiritually, you know, biblically doing the right thing. Because that's what we're supposed to do, to get together. We need each other. We cannot make it out our own, on our own. The shark says that you can make it on your own, and you will fail every time. So we get together. So there's a different thought process. If I'm going to do what God wants me to do, and I want to move the kingdom, and I want to change the world, everything is different. How I pray, what I ask for, how I see people. But you're never going to get that just from Sunday morning. And that's what you have to understand. I call this the Joshua Project. What is the things that we need to do to be successful and to move the kingdom? What do we have to do? And I'm looking at it not only for me, but for the church, because I'm the leader, okay? And I have to tell you where we're going in the next five years and what's going to happen. So what would be the formula for that? What would it look like if we did exactly what God was talking about in Joshua chapter 1? The first thing you need to know that you're going to get a word from God. Number one, you're going to get a word from God. He is going to speak, and he's going to speak in different places. I'll tell you that next week. But first of all, what happened here was there was a change. Remember I told you this? Something's going to change. One thing you need to know about God, okay, he's in no hurry. Now, you're in a big hurry. He's in no hurry. So there was a big change, and the change came like this. Moses, who was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness, he died. So the change came, and Joshua has got to be the leader now. He's got to follow Moses. Okay? Imagine putting in a coach, <laughs> you know, Nick Saban. Let's go with there with Alabama. Let's go ahead and make everybody mad. How would you like to try to follow him? You see what I'm saying? So he's walking into this, and God said, we're going over the Jordan now. We're going into the promised land. And Joshua is saying, me? I'm following him. And so he says something to him. In, jo in Joshua 1, uh, verse 6, he says, be strong and courageous. He says it many times as he goes through. For you shall cause these people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give them. Courage is what it's going to take. I'm following Moses. I'm leading these people across the Jordan. Forty years earlier, they sent spies in, and they said, the people are too big. We can't go in. So you know what God did? Another 40 years. Listen, you better be really careful. When God speaks to you, what you do with it? You need to be careful. So the change was coming. He said, you need to be courageous in this. Be of good courage. Be strong. I am going to be with you. Let me say one more thing and how this is going to play out. When God's Word speaks, when God speaks, it is going to happen. It's not a suggestion. And I think we look at the Bible as a suggestion or a help me book. This is the living Word of God being spoken. This is not a guide for you, just a guide for your life. This is the living Word of God being spoken. This is a major key and what was going to happen, and those kinds of things. When our back's against the wall, what you need to know is when things change, what do I believe? When our back's against the wall, that's where the courage comes in. When Moses faces Pharaoh, God's word must be, God's, what you said has to happen. Did, God, did Moses trust that? Absolutely, and it worked. You have David and Goliath. God told him what was going to happen. God's word came true. Do you believe what God's word says? That's going to be the key to your success right here and what happens. Do you actually believe it? Or is it just a suggestion and maybe something you might follow, and if I get in trouble, I'll run back to it? You're never going to know what it's like to move the kingdom with that kind of Christianity. There was a bunch of Christians in here. bunch of Christians. 
but I don't know how many disciples are here because that's a choice. And you may have never heard that language before. <clears throat> disciples, they rise up out of the normal. This is an incredible thought. They rise up out of the, norm, out of the normal. They deal with the abnormal. And they rise to the above normal. We never quit. We never stop. Because we're moving the kingdom. People's lives depend on what we do. You, you know what? I, most people don't ever know that or feel what I just said to you. You don't feel that. We don't feel it. I'm going to get you to feel it. We're, gonna, we're, going, we're going all the way in next year. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. But most people never see it that way. They never see how, you know, how I'm going to make that difference. Second principle, the Joshua principle, is follow God's word. Is to follow God's word. How simple does that sound to you? Go to Deuteronomy, go to the Bible, follow God's word, follow God's word, follow God's word. It's not a suggestion. It's not a self-help book. It's the living Word of God. It is very powerful. The reason why you have the Word of God is so that you can deal with things here. When the shark was on Jesus Christ, when the shark came to Jesus Christ, you know what Jesus Christ did? He quoted Scripture, your Bible. Why? Powerful, living Word. He said to him, be strong and courageous, be careful, do all according to the law of Moses. My servant commanded you not turn from the right or the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Number one failure I have seen over all the years doing this. People will not follow the Word of God. You get in trouble. You will not listen. You do not believe that it's powerful. We can overcome our flesh with it. We can overcome our thoughts with it. The Word of God changes life. It heals it's not just a book. And you're going to find out. You're going to see God's Word more visible in the next year than you've ever seen at Marathon. It is the Word of God that's going to make things successful. It is the Word of God that is going to change people's lives. That's what's going to happen. And I need to know how you're treating it. That's what you're going to have to think about. It is the living Word of God in written form, spoken to be used, carried out by us. Through us, God's will be done on earth as is in heaven. God's word will make that be every time. When you have the shark on you, when you have things going wrong, you need to find some scripture. You should know it. We're not going to just let the word of God just lay there and just be, just be a Sunday morning, hey, that was cool. We got to get this into our life. We got to make these things happen. Two or three years ago, I came to you, and I said, um, I said, Marathon's not growing spiritually. It was in October. I said, Marathon's not growing. I said, it's my fault. Okay? I said, it's my fault. Pray for my nose, Lord, have mercy. It's my fault. I said, I, I didn't listen to God. I got hard-headed. You have never done this. God's told you something, you just went right with it. Well, he told me something, and I didn't go with it. And he said, looks good on the outside, but inside, nothing's happening. There's no disciples being made. You're just doing Sunday morning. You're just doing what everybody else is doing. They said, that was good for 16 years ago, but it's not good now. It isn't good now. It's time to change. So I remember the early years of Marathon we did, and I got this idea from Rick Warren. He said, Eddie, here's what you need to do. You need to do topical messages. You know, they need to get people to come to church. And the idea was to grow a crowd. And we did. We grew a crowd. And we've done it with all of our churches. We've done the same thing. But after a while, there's only so many things you can do. You see, Jesus didn't go back to his disciples and talk about how many people were coming to hear, hear and speak. Okay? He wasn't concerned so much about how many, you know, growing the crowd. He was concerned about building his disciples. You see... What happened in the early days and is still happening now, we fell in love with a church or with a t-shirt rather than God. And it's okay to love your church. I'm not saying that. But God wants to have a relationship with you. You're his child. He bought you. And the only time you talk to him is on Sunday. He wants to develop you and grow you and empower you. That's going to come from his word and from his spirit. But you're going to have to spend time with him. So Jesus spent more time building disciples 
than building a crowd. Let's think about it this way. Would the crowds have left Jesus after a while? How many times can you raise the dead? You know, every weekend we'll raise the dead. Jesus raised the dead. Everybody comes, and pretty soon you're like, oh, he's just going to raise the dead again. Well, let's go somewhere else. And he said, well, this time we'll raise two people at a time. Then I'll come back for that. Oh, we got two people. And then we'll raise a whole cemetery. Oh, then it's on Facebook, and everybody's Twitter, and everyone. Well, oh, we raised the whole thing. Look at all these people. And guess what? Nobody's life was changed. That's got to stop. We got to make disciples. We got to dig into God's Word. We got to get to why we're here. And some of you, your Christianity has been like, you know, happy, sad, happy, sad. That's because you're not getting where you need to be. And we're going to stop that. We're making changes. We've been making changes for the last two years, and we're about to go all in on this one. So you got to remember that God's Word is so important that it needs to be forefront in our life. We need to be able to know what it says. We need to be able to use it, empower us, all these things. That's why it's there. And Joshua, he told Joshua, you do this, you will be successful. We're going to do that. So let me tell you the last part. Prepare to move. He told Joshua what was going to happen. Let me read this to you. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord God is with you wherever you go. If God has told you something, he's going to go with you. He's not going to leave you by yourself. Sometimes I think you think God just throws you out there. That's not how he works. You know, it's like your dad throwing you out in the pool. Swim. Swim, honey. God's going to, he doesn't do that kind of stuff. And we've got to remember that. So the, the idea now is that we need to prepare where we're going to go, what we're going to do. So here it is. Here's what's happening real quick. I'll get two, I'll get two weekends of this. So I'll tell you some more next weekend. Marathon is going to connect all the dots. We are going to make disciples from the children's area. We're going to prepare all the way up. And here's how it's going to work. So why should you come to Marathon? Listen very carefully. 16 years, first time I've seen this. We are all preparing. We've been working since January. Our, our staff, I'm moving staff around, giving them new things to do. I'm putting them in their gifting, and here's what's going to happen. We're going to start in the children's department, three-year-old in the children's department through the fourth grade. If you bring your child to th the th in three years old and they leave in the fourth grade, they're going to know the entire Bible. They had gone through the entire Bible twice before they leave. It's called the Gospel Project. They're going to have memory verses. They're going to have awards day. we got parent reading plans that you're going to read to your children. We've got smart boards in there. We've got video. And we are working right now with our teachers in order to make all this happen. If your children come to the marathon, they're going to know the Bible. And the reason they're going to know the Bible is because we got to have some kind of base. When I get in a runner's class, and let me tell you what a runner's class is for all the new ones. A runner's class is a discipleship class. It's a 10-month intense study process of growing into being, becoming like Jesus Christ. And you have to be invited into it. But when I get into those classes, I find out sometimes that the adults don't have the base. They don't know the stories. The children have to know the stories. They have to know that God works. They got to know the basics of Christianity, read, pray, serve, and give. I can go in the children's department, and now they can quote it to me. I got four-year-olds, read, pray, serve, give. They have no idea what it means. Okay, but they know it. I can't make a disciple out of a child, but I can make a Christian out of them. So we're going to know the stories and salvation, and we're going to prepare them for the moment when they can decide they want to be a disciple. Next thing we're going to do, starting September 8th, are you ready? A fourth, excuse me, a fifth and sixth class is going to be starting September 8th. It's going to happen. And what we're going to do, we're going to con start connecting the dots. Repray, serve, and give. We're going to start teaching virtues. We're going to teach fifth, fifth and sixth graders to love other people besides themselves. Wouldn't that be something, Mom and Daddy? Because that is the number one virtue of disciples getting over yourself. If you can't get over yourself, you'll never become a disciple. If you can't be the servant of all, you'll never be there. Amen. It will never happen. If you can't see the world outside your world, you're never going to get there. We're going to teach them virtues. We're going to teach them how to love. We're going to teach them the Bible. We're going to teach them how to use it. They're going to start doing it. Read, pray, serve, and give. Not going to make a disciple yet. Not old enough. Can't make that choice. Can't become a Christian. 
So here we, we move through this whole thing. We get into the children. We get into the four, uh, fifth and sixth grade, which is going to be hashtag, let me tell you this, hashtag 156 is what it's going to be called. September 8th. And so you need to know that. I got that. Do I have that date right? Is that on Sunday? Thank you. I knew a son. I, I go from I live from Sunday to Sunday, so I'm trying to figure that out. Now we move them into the youth. Listen to what's going to happen in youth. I'm going to save the ending, right? But part of the youth thing is going to learn their identity in Christ, their purpose and why they're here. They're going to be serving in, they're going to be serving out, they're going to be owning the schools. We already started doing that. We're already owning those schools. We got things that are going out in their hands right now. We're also doing a pre-runner for youth. Jamie Hammond is going to develop it out of my notes. We're going to do a pre-runner just for youth. We're going to have we're going to start making disciples right there. Still can't make one, but we can get we can get them moving. The whole idea is the whole church is moving toward this discipleship. From the time you're three years old all the way up through your you know all the way into high school. What can we do with that? Learning to be like God, those kind of things. Let me say this. You can't be a disciple until you get to choose. Okay? It's the bottom line. You can't be a disciple until you get to choose. You got to be able to drive your own car or whatever it is. You got to be able to give your own money, your own time, everything. At some point, you can't do it because mama told you to. At some point, I have to say, I want to become like Jesus Christ. I want to practice, read, praise, serve, and give on my own. I want it. And that happens around 18 to 25. So if, for 18 to 25, brand new, here we go. It's going to happen. Make sure I get my dates right. Set, starting September 18th, there's going to be a group called Render. It's going to be happening on September 18th on Thursday nights. I'm going to be leading it. And the reason I want to lead it is because I know what I'm getting there. These kids want to know. We asked them, I said, tell me what you want. They grew up in this church stuff like this. The big churches and the bands and the donuts and the blue jeans. And I said, is that really what 20-year-olds want? They want, still want, no, they don't want that. They want to know what it's like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. They want to know. They want to talk about it. They want hands-on. That's what they're looking for. After a while, you can only raise the dead so many times. At some point, you got to decide, I want to do this. And when you hit 18, when you hit in that group right there, you get to decide if you're going to do this or not. That is the missing link in the church. We're going to connect the dots. That's going to happen. And I'll tell you, one of the things they were telling me is they want to have a discussion about it. They want to sit around. We're going to talk about discipleship. This is not program-driven on Thursday nights for all of you from 18 to 25. This is pure discipleship. We're going to talk about what Jesus Christ did and how what you should be doing and how you should be living in this world and how we're going to move the kingdom. That's what we're going to do. We're connecting the dots from three-year-old all the way up. Now, then they go get married. Oh, my. Then they have kids. Oh, my. Everything just changed. What are we going to do with you guys? We already have runners groups that are forming. Some of you will be asked to be in a disciple group. You know how you get into that? You actually serve. You actually do some of that. Let me show you a picture of what happened this morning, okay? Let me show you a picture. Look right here. You see that? Look all the way around the room. That was in here. That's 830, almost 100 people praying at 830. Can you believe that? They're praying for you. They're praying over every chair. Everything that's happening, they're praying. That's where we are right now. We are preparing to move. We're preparing to grow. That's what you need to know. What can, listen, what do you want to do? We've got runner's classes. We've got pre-runner classes. We've got post-runner classes. I'm going to have Greek and Hebrew. I've got all kinds of stuff coming. We already have Revelation. We got Old Testament. We got New Testament. We got women's groups that are going to be forming. We got small groups that are going to be forming after the first of the year. And I can do nothing without you. So you see, here's the thing. Next week, we're going to talk about it. If God's going to speak to us and He's going to tell you, let me ask you, how far do you want to go with this? How serious are you going to be about following Jesus Christ and becoming a disciple? What are you going to do with that? Just getting into the basic stuff, you know, the repraise, serve, and give, that kind of thing. 
How far are we going to go? So here's, so here's where we're going in January. Everything that I'm telling you, starting in the children's department, will happen in January. We're preparing to make that happen. We're trying to get the rooms together. As money comes in, we'll redo the rooms. That's what we're doing. We've got smart boards in there. We've got videos in there. We're ready. Some of the stuff that we're doing hasn't all been written yet. It's called the Gospel Project in there. Here's what we're going to do in here. This book is called The Story. What I have discovered that most of us don't have an idea exactly what happened in the Bible, what God was talking about, and what He was doing. We have some sketches, you might say, or text messages of the little things that happened. But what was God up to from the beginning to the end? Starting in January, we will all be walk, walking through the story. The chronological order of the Bible will be, ha- will be in the Scripture all next year. Everybody in the room who wants to do this, we're going to find a way to get these and get them cheap for you if you want to do it. But we're all going to be in the room. Genesis through Revelation, we're going to find out what God's saying to us and how this redemptive plan works and what we're supposed to be doing. We're all going to be do it, doing it. For the first time in 16 years, the entire church will be on one page, and it will be God's. Amen. One page. I can't wait to see what happens. I talked with some pastors in other states, and they said it totally changed their world because it changed yours. Nobody, we can't move the kingdom without you. You see how that works? I think you've got to get, you've got to stop the Sunday morning, you know, Christianity and start digging in here. Okay, let's get some things in order. Get prepared. I'll start you next week. Starting next month, we're going to do some things on healing some wounds, emotional wounds in our life. Because the shark plays around with those things. Things that are there, things that are deep, you got hurt, whatever it is, we're going to work toward moving that and healing those wounds so we can get whole by January. So we're going to be preparing all the way. We're going to be doing scripture in January. I cannot wait. To, I'm telling you. Do you want to go? Yeah. Do you want to do this? You got to get prepared. Okay? You can't play around with this one. You can't. You can't do it. And that's what I'm telling you. We're going to go together. That's what Joshua was telling him. He said, get ready. Now, he told him to get ready in three days. How about let's talk about getting ready by January? Is that cool? I'm going to need volunteers for this. And you're going to have to be on time. I don't know why. Why would we? I don't, <laughs> you're not late for work, right? I mean, you just have to think about it. Just for me. I'm, I'm just throwing stuff out to you. you got to think a minute. How important is this? How important is it? No more watching. We're going to get in. Okay, stand with me. Next week, we're going to talk about how to find, how to hear, hear God and what to do with it when we hear it. This is a pretty good crowd for August. I'm ready to go over Jordan. You know what I mean? I've been waiting. We've been working for two years. We've been starting in January. We're ready. We're ready. But you've got to go with me. Okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you to people who are going to jump in there with us. Thank you for your word. It is powerful. It's unbelievable. I pray Marathon will see you do things we've never seen before in 16 years. We know that through your word, all things are possible. So, Father, empower us, no longer Sunday morning Christians. Get us ready for what we're going to do. And we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Roy McCall will be down front. Let me, Roy's dad passed away last week, and so you need to be praying for him got services coming up this week so I'll be praying for him and he will love to pray with you if you'd like to talk to him after service he will be down here and so let's pray for the offering I don't appreciate all of you who have been giving August is usually our rough month because of school it's a happy sad month <laughs> but it's what it is and so thank you for giving and doing the things that God asked you to do let's pray Father thank you for the people who are giving I pray you bless them just give it all back to you in Jesus name I pray amen Okay, real quick, uh, coming up next weekend, August 25th at 11 o'clock, we have a volunteer class. Find out where you can get it plugged in. At some point, you have to get serious about this stuff, okay? At some point, all right? So just letting you know that. 
food drives coming up next weekend. They're going to be giving out slips in the foyer, let you know what we need, okay? You know, we've got Thanksgiving coming up. Can you believe it? Thanksgiving and Christmas, here we go. Here we go. It's the most wonderful time. Y'all just remember that, all right? Back to school service. Praise the Lord. Uh, back to school service, August 28th. That's Wednesday night for the youth, for those people right there. Uh-oh. You almost missed that. You almost missed that one. I just want you to know that. Okay, here we go. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to have some fun. All right, watch this. Y'all, y'all come on out here. Watch this. This is going to be fun. Come on, come on. Are y'all not split? Do not talk to each other. Do not talk. Okay, here we go. All right, do you know, does everybody know what that is? Okay, all right. Everybody know what this is? Well, let's see if they give as loud as they yell. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, all right. All right, here we go. Here's the deal. Here's what we're doing. You know, August 31st, September, uh, August 31st, Georgia and Clemson, the biggest game of the year, right off the bat. Right? Everybody got that? Okay, here's what's happening. There's going to be thousands of people come down 153. They're going to get chicken, and then they're coming down. Okay? So if we decided to do something. We decided that we're going to get their attention. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Clemson and Carolina flags and mix them in with marathon flags and all our signs to get everybody's attention down the road, okay? Now, here's what we decide to do. Since we don't have any of those flags, <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Whoever gives the most, come on over, yeah, come on over here. Don't touch me, though, okay. Whoever gives the most money, whether it be Carolina or whether it be Clemson, Y'all will get the extra flags on 153. These flags are 11 and a half feet tall. They're $60 a piece. Now, whatever's left over, we're going to move that to the fifth and sixth grade because we haven't budgeted that. This is all new. We didn't know that was going to happen. And we're going to move all the extra money over there to take care of what we need to take care of, curriculum and all that stuff over there. Okay? So if you love Carolina, if you love Clemson, Real quick, if you're a Georgia fan, listen up. No, hold on, man. Don't go anywhere. Listen, you need to choose the lesser of the two evils. SEC. Okay, so whatever it is you need to go with, if you firm and choose, you know, whatever. Okay. So they're going out, right? They go out right there. Go out to guest services. And if you love Jesus, okay, I could throw that in. That'd be bad, wouldn't it? I ain't going to do that to you. I ain't going to do that to you. All right. Go on out there. Go to Carolina. Go to Clemson. Go to Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, we have a dog, all right, all right, all right, there we go, we got Georgia, all right, let's stand and sing and we'll be done, don't forget to go buy the bucket, I wrote this song, I wrote this, that's right, all right, come on, sing it out, this is original, we can trust our God. Time begins at the very end we can We will trust you, Lord, forevermore Oh, forevermore Come on, put your hands together We speak out loud the words of truth Speak out loud your words of truth In the name of God, we give to you Our broken bones and our heavy hearts We won't stop believing We got hope and we are singing We can trust our God He'll never fail He's always here We can trust our God When the time begins To the very end we can We will trust you, Lord Forevermore Won't hold it. 
us down the low. We fight this fight we're fighting for. We can trust our God. We will forevermore. Doubt won't hold us down the low. We fight this fight we're fighting for. We can trust our God. We will forevermore. Doubt won't hold us down the low. We fight this fight we're fighting for. We can trust our Trust our God, He will never fail. He was always there. We can trust our God from the time we get to the very end. And we can trust our God, He will never fail. He is always there. We can trust our God from the time we get to the very end. And we can trust our God, He will never fail. He is always there. We can trust our from the time we get to the very end we get and we will trust you Lord forevermore oh, we can trust you Lord doubt won't hold us down doubt won't hold us down no more we fight this fight we're fighting for we can trust our God we will Down the road, we fight this fight, we fight it for We can trust our God, we will forevermore Doubt won't hold us down the road We fight this fight, we're fighting for We can trust our God, we will forevermore God bless you guys, see you next Sunday